This is a test of a 10 inch diameter pancake or spiral work coil. I am doing this investigation to see if this 1000 watt ZVS induction heater using this type of coil could be used for annealing sheet steel as part of the sheet metal sculpting process. The repose and raising processes are two processes that come to mind. And here are just a couple of examples of uh, uh, about 18 gauge sheet metal uh, that has been chiseled out and, uh, and had some volume added to it by raising. And if you do a lot of this work where you're severely working the material, it can work hard and so you need to anneal it in order to get it to move again without cracking. I made the coil this big just because that's the amount of tubing that I had left on one roll that I bought. I wound this coil first and then applied the insulated sleeving after it had been formed. Uh, it's kind of tough to do the insulating that way, but I just did it because I just wanted to get an idea of the inductance of the coil before I went to the trouble of insulating it. It has an induction of about 11.75 microhenries and an idle frequency of about 27 kilohertz. This work coil has the highest inductance of any that I have made so far. Yes, I know that the ID is rather large at about two and a half inches, but I just wanted to get the darn thing made without worrying too much about kinking a less than one inch ID of the first couple of turns while I tested this very different from what I usually do idea. I guess I am also testing the low frequency limit of this 1000 watt ZVS induction heater. I probably won't ever make a coil with a larger inductance than this one. So now we'll turn the power on. The idle current is about 2 amperes. The frequency is 27.8 right now. I guess it'll change slightly just by pushing down on the coils a little bit, but it's 27.800 at the moment. For this one, if you've seen my little antenna, uh, this, uh, this kind of coil worked a little different, so I had to hide the antenna, or actually put the antenna underneath the coil about a quarter of an inch away to get it to read reliably, but it works reliably now. I want to make the point that with this particular coil, we still have very nice straight edges on the gate signals. So it looks like one could say the lower the frequency, the faster the MOSFETs turn on. And that has got to be because of the design of the gate circuit, which we're pretty much stuck with with this design. The power is on, the cooling is on, and you really don't want to stick your fingers across here, you get a little zap. The uh, water temperature right now with the radiator's cooling fan on is 82 degrees. That's about 4 degrees above ambient at this moment. Again, uh, 2 amps of idle current, 27.18 uh, kilohertz operation. I will be trying several different thicknesses of sheet metal today just to see how they behave in the coil. So this is just an unfolded coffee can and the reason that I did this uh, unfolded this is because I wanted to get some really thin material. This is probably only seven or eight, maybe ten thousandths thick. So we'll just kind of put it on the coil here and see what the current does and the frequency. So if I put a lot of it on there. I got about 18 amps. And 5, 6, 16 amps, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Whoops, I, I raised it up above a little bit there. And uh, I don't know, half a minute or so. Uh, it's smoking pretty good. Down to uh, 10 amps. move it over here trying to find a sweet spot 10 amps so that's about 8 amps going in 
and it's getting warm and you'd think since the current drop from whatever it was 18 or 20 amps to about 12 where it is right now that that would mean it's past the curie point but I don't see it glowing lights are off and I still don't see any glow or 28.6 kilohertz 14 amps now I don't know why but anyway so that's that piece so I'm a little disappointed that that didn't glow but now what we're going to do is we're going to insulate both above and below the work so I have I have a couple of pieces of ceramic insulation material and I'm going to place one on top of the work, put the work back in here and put another sheet of that ceramic material on top of it. And the, the reason for that is even though we're putting a certain amount of energy into this material, there's a, a wide radiating surface. So I'm going to see if by insulating both sides of this we can get a uh, higher temperature and maybe getting hot enough to uh, glow enough to anneal. So I'll lay that on here. We'll just maybe count 30 seconds here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, and we'll take a quick peek. And I don't see a glow there. I'll turn the lights off and see if we see a glow. Oh, it's starting to glow on the edges. Now remember, there's a two and a half inch hole in this thing. I'm going to center it back on there again. Cover it up, give it another 30 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I'm going to take this off, put it back on, turn the lights off, see a little bit of glow. Yeah, yeah, our insulation isn't all that great. So I'll turn the light off. We'll take a look again at the glow, and we're getting some glowing there. That's probably hot enough to anneal, but that cooks this insulation pretty fast. It's not the world's best. Okay. So, there's that, for whatever that's worth. And that's pretty thin material. That's pretty thin material. Back to 2 amps. Water's heated up to 85. For the heck of it, we'll just try another piece of, of coffee can, but this time just uh, just the, the lid that I cut out of the top of that can. And that's 10 amps. I don't think we really have to wait for that very much. I just was curious if being circular would do anything particularly different. Well, we'll wait. We'll go 30 seconds again. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, down to 8 amps. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And it's just starting to go around the rim. Okay, that's that. I guess I'm a little disappointed. I hope that uh, we get more out of this. So here's a sheet of 16 gauge steel. And I already did try heating this up once and I think I left it on there for several minutes and I got the, uh, I, I shined up this rusty piece in a couple of places and I got it as hot as a blue oxide color after I think it was several minutes and that implies about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. But anyway, let's see what kind of current flow we get too much. 26 amps is as far as I dare go. 
So I'm kind of gently laying it down on there, trying to keep that current not over about 22 amps. And I, by the way, the frequency didn't increase much with the coffee can, but with this baby, we're up to 31.4 kilohertz from 27, whatever it was. I'm just trying to keep this around 20, 22 amps, laying it down slowly as it heats up. It's interesting that as it heats up, it's already the current starting to drop. 26, we don't want to go quite that high. I still have it tilted a little bit away from the coil on the on the forward edge here. 22, I'm trying to hold it there. And I don't know what I've been, 30 seconds, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 24 amps, I should pack it off a little. And I'm around 60, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. Now anyway, there that's what we're doing. I'm gonna stick a thermocouple in here and just see what that baby does. And I'm reading the thermocouple over here. And let me see, 20 amps, 22, 22. Now I'm laying it there, 22 is as high as it goes. Frequency 29.4. The uh, little meter that you can probably physically see it but can't read it is uh, only reading about 230 degrees. Oh, that's Celsius, come to think of it. Isn't it? Yeah, it is degrees C, so uh, I don't know, roughly double it, 500. Anyway, so now it's just kind of hanging in there about. Uh, 21 amps. That's as hot as it gets. My insulation is smoking more. I probably shouldn't be breathing it a whole lot. So I don't know. I stopped counting, didn't I? So it's been two or three minutes. I doubt very much it's going to glow. The uh, temperature is 350 degrees Celsius now. Turn off the light and take a sneak peek, but I doubt that anything's glowing in there. Oh, it is glowing at the other side. Son of a gun. At the back. Did you see that? My thermocouple fell out, but anyway, it's glowing back there. So that's cool. I mean, hot. Let me put my thermocouple back in, in that area where it was pretty hot right from my shoulder in the way there. Twenty amps. The other end of the steel is getting kind of warm. amps or down to 18 amps so part of it is above the curing point that's for sure Let's see if I can bend the insulation here Let's see if you see me yeah it's a pretty dim glow but I think we'll call it here maybe 500 degrees Celsius is as high as we're going to get or the uh, current has dropped back. Whoops, the 
I lay it on there flat again, the current is still 22 amps. So a lot of it has not reached the annealing temperature. That's it for this test. Current off, water temperature got up to 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And as you can see here, uh, the uh, uh, insulating material isn't the world's best stuff. But it's better than nothing, and it, it held most of the heat in. Well, okay, so you've seen my little demonstration and experiment. So if the question is, what is this thing good for? The answer is, you know what, I guess I'm not really sure. I guess I had assumed it might do a little more annealing. Um, I suppose it could under the right circumstances. Uh, if a person had the patience to heat up a small uh, portion of a large piece at, at, uh, at a time. One thing is for sure though, the system can stand a work coil of in inductance of at least 12 microhenries while maintaining good sharp gate signals as we saw, which means that the system can survive lengthy runs at full power of about 22 amps at 48 volts. And of course this is a 1000 watt unit. Now, we can see an effective operating frequency range of about 26 kilohertz to about 130 kilohertz if you watch my other videos with the stock 6 each 0.33 microfarad tank capacitors. We have also seen a wide range of 48 volt idle currents from as high as about 12 amperes or so with the tiny 3x3 three three cartridge brass annealing coil to a low of about 2 amperes with today's 10 inch diameter pancake coil. I hope this video and my previous videos on this subject will help you in operating your own ZVS induction heater and make it easier to design work coils for your particular applications. Please do take some time to study my work coil design data spreadsheet there is a link to it down in the description. Thank you for watching.